Sailor tattoos tell a story from places we've been to our superstitions. But sometimes the story is actually of the artist who created them. And there is probably no greater story than that of the artist that popularized the American traditional tattoo style. And probably there is not another more famous tattoo artist amongst sailors than Norman Collins. Oh, you probably don't know him by that name. You know him by none other than Sailor Jerry. Now, Mr. Collins grew up in Northern California, and it said he got the nickname Jerry that because his family owned a donkey. The donkey acted like an ass, and apparently so did Mr. Collins, so they gave him the nickname of the donkey. Now, in his late teenage years, Jerry took to riding the trains, much like a lot of people did around that time, about Great Depression era, trying to find his way in life. And it is through his travels that he would learn the art of tattooing, originally with the uh, stick and poke method, you know, the pointy object in ink into the skin, you know, not the most sanitary of methods. But his travels would take him eventually to Chicago, where he would learn the art of tattooing with an electric needle. At the age of 19, he enlisted in the United States Navy. And through his travels in Southeast Asia, he would come across different styles of tattooing. He would see brighter colors, broader lines. These were things that he would later incorporate into the American traditional tattoo style that he is considered a pioneer of. That's also not the only thing he would later become a pioneer of. When he got out of the Navy, he stayed in Hawaii. He would later actually try to re-enlist again after Pearl Harbor got bombed, but he would be denied, and he would join the Merchant Marines from there. And not only was he a sailor with the Merchant Marines and the U.S. Navy, he would own his own three-masted schooner that he would give tours around Hawaii of. So he was a sailor in every sense of the word. They said he was qualified on any boat that could set sail. Much like the donkey from which he supposedly took his nickname, he would be a hard-headed individual. It's said that he wouldn't even tattoo you if you had tattoos from an artist that he didn't respect because he didn't really care for artists that did nothing but copy his and others' work and never create their own. Which is kind of funny, given how many sailors request his flash tattoos from other artists. Now, not only was he picky about who he would tattoo, but he was extremely picky about who he'd tattoo with the color purple. For you see, he was the pioneer and reason for the pigment purple in tattooing. He had it created to expand his color palette. So if you have any purple on a tattoo, you have him to thank for it. And that's still not the only thing he was a pioneer of. He was one of the pioneers of single-use needles to cut down risks of infection. He was one of the pioneers of using an autoclave to sterilize his tools. Because you see, before that time, with the stick-and-poke methods of earlier years that had gone on a couple hundred years, the risk of infection was huge. That's why people were, with tattoos were seen as dirty because it was an easy way to path, pass along different diseases. He th learned this during his time doing stick and poke on the trains and then revolutionized it to cut down and keep his clients safer. His tattoo studio still stands to this day. It's gone through a couple name changes, but his condition for keeping it open was that it had to pass along to one of his protégés. And after that protégé passed on, it was renamed Old Ironside Studio, which still stands and is actually named after him because that was the name of a radio show he used to have on when he was in Hawaii. Not only does his legacy continue with the popularity of his flash art, he still has a brand of rum out there that most of you are probably familiar with, or at least that's how you know his name, and through his protégés, one of them being Ed Hardy. Yes, that Ed Hardy whose artwork was put on a bunch of t-shirts in the early 2000s that most of the older millennials and Gen X are probably aware of. It was basically the unofficial uniform of anyone who said, yeah, I would have joined the military, but if a drill instructor got in my face, I'd have to punch him in the mouth. I'm sure most of you are aware of that douche bro. Nothing against Mr. Hardy himself. Great tattoo artist. The majority of people that decided to wear his clothing, though, were not so much. His effects on the tattoo industry and sailor tattoo art as a whole can be felt to this day. His flash art is still massively popular amongst sailors. Getting a hula girl on you or something like that is just see, almost seen as a rite of passage for most. The, he pioneered the American traditional tattoo style. He you know, started running sterilized equipment with single-use equipment. He created an entire new pigment to tattoo with. His legacy will live on long past any of us. 
the way a lot of tattoo studios are run today are because of this guy. So next time you have a bottle, pour a shot and throw one back for Sailor Jerry.